Hello everybody, I'm going to talk about this chassis that I just got out on Shapeways for you guys. There are two of them actually, but we'll, we'll go over just some of the basics of it, things for you to uh, watch out for. First, I do want to say thank you to Will Ailing. Um, I hired him to make this for me. I knew what I wanted and where I wanted it. He made it happen and uh, made it look good, so thank you, sir. The speaker hinge idea came from Satoshi of Harp. I saw his, loved it, and I asked him if I could use that idea, and he was very nice and said yes. So here we are. <clears throat> um, this is, there is no markup on these. The, the price that you see is uh, just what Shapeways charges to make it. I did not get this done so I could make money off of it. I made it for convenience for me uh, on some of the installs that I had to do on my own sabers. You know, because with these... Uh, booster sections to get the full depth of cut you've got a small uh, internal diameter so I needed I needed a chassis like this <clears throat> and I wanted easy access for the SD cards I, I do not like having to lift up the board to access SD that's just me but anyways I am putting this out there just you know thinking maybe you guys can take advantage of it too it's no uh no loss to me. Um, you know, it's only a gain if you guys can get some use out of it. So, hope you do. Anyways, let's get on with it. <clears throat> this is the shorter chassis that requires the use of the small charge port and switch. This is the charge port that you would be using. And this is the switch. Charge port, as you can tell, goes on the bottom. You might have to sometimes get a little piece of sandpaper through there to make sure that those two slots where the legs go through will pass through easily, but it, it just pushes right in there from this direction. And you can see that there is a little spot in there for it to sit in. I'll sometimes put a little drop of super glue in there right before I finish pushing it all the way in, but that's about it. You don't need much. <clears throat> that little spot right there will keep it from pushing in too far. The super glue, I guess, is more or less just so that it doesn't pull back out easily. And then the other switch, <clears throat> the on-off switch, just pushes right in there and it holds nicely. You do not need to use any glue for that. On the small charge port, I do remove this one leg right here, just a you know, a file or a knife or whatever, just to get rid of that one little button right there, because <clears throat> that button wants to push up push up on this little plastic piece right there and make it difficult for the switch to go in. So by getting rid of that one that's towards the front, keep the one in the back, that'll help lock it in place. But get rid of that one towards the front. That will help you out. <clears throat> the magnets. These two little small magnets, which I will have these parts listed. But one goes in there. Another one goes in there, and that is what will help keep it shut. <clears throat> I have found by putting super glue in this one before I put the magnet in helps. For some reason, this side needs a little, little extra some. This one is stiffer, and I have not had to put any glue in this side. And it's made to where this magnet will push in just a little bit further than flush. And this one will usually stick out a little further than flush, and that helps it seat in place, and it helps keep that wiggle down. If, if that doesn't happen, it's not a big deal, but uh, I try to uh, make sure that that happens on the ones that I do. You will need a 1.5 millimeter brass rod pin, whatever you want to call it, for this. Now, I've been using electric base wire on it. I have some that seems to be the perfect size. Holds in there nicely. But uh, the rod is what it's designed for. 1.5 millimeter. And then after I get it in there, I'll put a little drop of super glue just on the top. And may maybe on both sides. But I do not get any around the hinge. I mean, it does not take much just to make sure it can't slip out. <clears throat> now, you also have two holes here. And that is for a 132nd brass rod, if you like. I don't use them, but they are there if you want to. Let's see if I can get this in while looking at the camera. But that'll slip right in there. 
and that will give you something for the cover to sit on but I usually glue the cover down in just the four corners I don't glue the whole thing down unless I have a reason but usually not just the four corners a little drop that way I can get a knife under there should I and, and cut it or break it loose a little hobby knife in case I need to reaccess later but if you want a little extra decoration you can get these 132nd rods and slip in there and that will help keep the cover uh, in its position now these 132nd rods can also go here which I have not been using these either uh, I believe I've got this one cleared out already you will have to sometimes clear these out if you want a little extra decoration you can put the 132nd rod in there as well <clears throat> on the cover I found that I sometimes have to sand a little bit here it depends on the print that you get but sometimes you might have to this one fits pretty darn good as far as setting the board in there this is snug you'll I always have to sand the edges of my board and then you might also have to clear out a little bit in here again it's kind of dependent on the print that you get I found that Shapeways isn't always perfect but they are pretty good but uh, if you don't you'll end up with a little bulge right here that you might end up having trouble rubbing and then you'll have to spend some time sanding that down it's easier before you do your install to go ahead and sand your board and clean out this if needed to make sure your board fits nicely and your board will set in there I, I didn't think to grab one for this but the board will set in there with your ST card and your USB plug right there and you'll need well you won't need but this is another optional if you're mounting this the way you've seen me do with a chassis adapter you'll need 1 16th brass rods to go in there as such and that is what is meant to hold the chassis now you can still even if you're not using a chassis adapter and say you've got it glued in and you've only got like this much showing you can still put some rod in there for a little decoration if you like but that is 1 16th brass rods so as far as rods go you've got 1 16th inch 1 32nd inch for here and here and 1.5 millimeter for right there 1.5 millimeter is just a hair below a 16th inch do not drill this out to try to use 16th inch rod that's going to make this hinge too weak <clears throat> now as far as battery goes I usually use uh, keep power batteries but I had these on hand so I just grabbed it I hardwire these I first will go ahead and tin this end and I, and I kind of look at how I want my battery to lay in there and just kind of tin the bottom of it. But I tin that end. Um, I hardwire my red to this side and go ahead and have it bent and shaped to be coming down the side here. And then I slide it in here, usually trying to get my sticker hidden. And you can see here that the wire passages are right here on each side of the battery. I'll go ahead and pick my side that I want my battery wire to come off of and, and push that in there as such and I will get my battery positioned where I want try to keep it to where everything is protected and not cannot touch anything and I'll put a little bit of uh grab this rod here to point with I'll put a little bit of E6000 maybe here and here or somewhere just so that you can't see it through and that let that set up and that will keep make sure that your battery can't slide back and forth I mean the battery fits pretty good in here but just a little extra precaution never hurts but I do keep my positive on this end and my negative on this end to uh, give me extra space I don't want that button poking in here and something else that can possibly short out because it is tight especially on this chassis <clears throat> 
Now, as far as your wire passages, I've had no problems getting my wires through. I can, I usually put my uh, two heavy wires and my data wire from the pixel connector on one side and my four switch wires on the other. If I'm doing a crystal chamber, I might split those up a little bit. Um, let me step back. I'll put my four switch wires on the same side that I have my uh, positive, heavy positive coming from my battery. So I've, I'll have those five wires on this side. On this side, I'll have my uh, <clears throat> two heavies and my small data together here. And I've had no problems getting those through ever. Sometimes it can get a little bit more tight if you're doing a crystal chamber. You got them extra wires to fit through. Um, sometimes, you know, I'll split those between the two sides. <clears throat> You will want to play around if you're getting extra wires with getting them through here um, before you glue your battery in just to make sure that you're, you're going to be able to do what you can do. You know, so don't glue that battery in too soon before you've test fit or, uh, you know, to make sure if you got to take any other precautions. But they will go. <clears throat> On... Uh, I got these two sabers here to show you a couple of examples. These sabers do not have a chassis ad adapter. They are glued in. So you can see that it's glued into that certain point. I don't even have this door cover glued down because uh, the way this way I did the end cap, I had to remake some parts. The way I did that, it's a very nice fit and it just holds itself in. But you see you can decorate and get some things, lights glowing if you like. But yeah, so that's just glued in, no chassis adapter. Here's my hinge. And there is the charge port switch and USB. There on my switch, you can see I put a green mark. I uh I messed up and put this one backwards, so I did that to always know which, which was the on position. Because I did not want to go back and uh, rewire this just to turn a switch around, you know what I'm saying? But anyways, yeah, so your uh, card, data card, USB, switch, charge port, all right there. And here's another one that is just glued in. I didn't even paint this one up. Uh, same, you can see I, I did some screen there to uh, just have some lights. And you can see there I've got my green mark on the other side. This is the way I wanted my switch. <clears throat> Things happen. But charge port, switch, card, USB. You can see there's my two magnets. Now see there how I've got, I've got that. That little, that one's sticking out and that one's pushed in a little bit. I did that just to give me a solid lock in. It's probably not needed, but that's just kind of things I like to do. When doing your wire, your speaker wires, because that's the one thing you'll have to deal with as being a moving part, I have my wires shaped and placed the way I want. They're just going straight up in the board. They do not go in there and then loop back. <clears throat> I have it shaped the way I want. I soldered into my board with my hatch open just sitting there and pushed up against the plastic, I put E6000 up in here, being very careful not to get any over on where my card goes into. You don't want to make a mess with that E6000. So just enough, and then I let that set up, set up good, and I have never had an issue. So those are just two examples of <clears throat> gluing them in. To a, a one inch inner diameter saber. <clears throat> um, I use chassis adapters on, with my threaded grips and try to, you know, just take advantage of whatever I can, but I do not have those available for you guys yet. However, if you have a, a one inch that you're gluing into the upper part of the hilt and it's an inch and an eighth lower, you can glue it up in there like that. Make you a chassis sleeve to go on this and decorate it up for your inch and an eighth inner diameter. If you have room, you can have your battery, instead of pushed all the way through, just have it partially in there and glued in good. And then, you know, your chassis glued in up to there. You can create space to do a crystal chamber inside of there. Just, just mount the chassis upside down or sideways 
and, and there you've created a space for a crystal chamber. Um, on this particular saber, my switches are here. So, you know, I just drilled my hole. Let me try to figure out how deep this is. It's sitting about like that. So I just drilled holes into here where I needed for my switch wires so that they would line up kind of with the channels. So I drilled holes right here, or probably just one hole for, for both wires to come through. I doubt I drilled two. So I just drilled a hole right there, made it made the wires come on through right there. It's just a flexible chassis. If you can modify it and, and do some things to, to uh, either have it for a tight space or if you want to do a little extra for some blinking lights or whatever, um, you know, so it's easy to, it's easy to glue with having these uh, decoration things about it, you know, so it's just a, what I've found to be a good all around working chassis, nothing great, just something that's usable and I can modify. I do hope to uh, have a chassis adapter. Um, I, I just recently did a chassis adapter for a goth crystal chamber to adapt to this. I'm hoping to make that printable. Um, I got to think about other chassis adapters. I'm not sure how that would work for public use. I'll make those as needed for what I need. But uh, And also in the works is another... Uh, another one with a removable battery it will have to be just a little bit longer i want it to be based off of this short one so it can have the switch here still and be a little bit longer and have a removable battery um so hopefully that can come soon but yeah guys hope this explained a few things and uh may the force be with you